Hello and welcome to Salty About Health. My name is Delaney Algier and I'm here with my mom and co-host, Mary. So mom, why are we salty about health? Good question. It's because both of us have had struggles, some more serious than others, and no one showed us simple ways we could jump into the driver's seat and take control. And why are we sharing our views with our listeners? Well, because we want our listeners to realize that it may take time, but with some simple knowledge about health, they'll be able to make a few changes and dig deeper to take control of their well-being and live a more vibrant life. That's fantastic. But right now, before we get into all of that, we just need to do some housekeeping. Here we go. This is an opinion-based podcast. This is not in any way offered as a diagnosis or treatment for any disease, illness, or infirmity for physical or mental condition or any other condition you may have. We are not doctors or practitioners of any kind. Persons needing medical care should obtain it from a medical practitioner. So consult your practitioner before making any health decision. The opinions offered here in this podcast are ours alone. Again, we're not doctors, and the banter you're going to be listening to is our view and our view alone. Okay, that's done. We, of course, also want to have an open dialogue with our listeners. So stay tuned to the end of the episode, and we'll let you know all of the ways that we can connect. Welcome, welcome, everyone. We're so glad you could join us for episode 43. Today, we're going to talk about foods that act as natural anti-allergy foods. But first, we're going to define the difference between an allergy to a food and a food intolerance. Symptoms of food allergies range from mild to life-threatening. They can be abdominal pain or cramps, bloating, tingling, itching in the mouth, metallic tastes in the mouth, nausea and vomiting, difficulty breathing or shortness of breath, wheezing, swelling of the tongue so you talk like this (laughs) trouble swallowing dizziness weak pulse drop in blood pressure symptoms of shock such as skin rash aka hives and flushed skin swollen lips and anaphylaxis which can be life-threatening uh these all can be very serious signs so you should seek out medical attention if necessary yes food Allergy is caused by an abnormal response of the immune system to certain foods. The most common foods which may cause allergies include milk and milk-based products such as cheese, cream, butter, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts such as walnuts and pecans, soy, seafood, shellfish, which is also seafood, (laughs) wheat, You can also have allergies to pollen, mold spores, pet dander, dust mites, latex, certain medicines, and insect stings. Mom. (laughs) Yes, yes. (laughs) I don't do well when things bite me. Um, Or sting you, or maybe even crawl on you. (laughs) Well, that's true. I mean, spider bites, horrible. Anything. Red ants. Yeah. Yeah. It it takes me weeks to get over it. Um, That's a histamine issue, definitely. (laughs) You can prevent the allergic reaction by avoiding what I just mentioned, which can be easier said than done sometimes, especially with insects. (laughs) Oh yeah, because they're everywhere. And then also just like pollen is everywhere. But also sometimes like I have a wheat sensitivity, I would say, Um, not like an allergy. So when I make things that use substitutes for wheat, a lot of times that includes tree nuts. Mm -hmm. So I made a recipe for a group of people and luckily it didn't have tree nuts or anything in it, but I was like, yeah, it's gluten-free. And then this guy was like, oh yeah, I have a very severe tree nut (gasps) allergy. I was like, oh no, don't eat my food. (laughs) I took the labels. I was like, oh my gosh. So I guess also be aware of that, like stuff that's labeled allergy friendly, really check it. Cause if it doesn't cover like everything, they substitute with stuff that other people might be allergic to. And it's all very convoluted. 
So. Yes. And they, if they do have nuts and things like that in it, they do need to put that on the label, but you're right. You're not really paying attention to it when you think, well, I just need to stay away from gluten. Oh yeah. It's gluten-free. Right. And then, yeah, yeah definitely. And then I make something with like, you know, if I make like a brownie or something, then it's, well, that visibly does not have nuts in it. So if they think it's just a normal brownie, like that wouldn't call for any nut ingredient. So yeah. Something like that. Yeah, no, that's very true. And also, um, we'll have to do an episode on cross reactive foods, which I tell my clients all the time, because if they have allergies to latex, there are mm. cross reactive foods. And you can look those up on the internet, but like carrots, things like that, depending on what kind of allergy you have, you should really stay away from those foods during that allergy season. Okay. No, well, that's interesting. Uh, and then, you know, I mentioned that I, my wheat stuff is more of an intolerance and those food intolerances can be cause more subtle health challenges that make someone feel uncomfortable without outward, like huge immune reactions. Uh, food intolerances can often lead to elevated levels of whole body inflammation that can cause fatigue and joint pain, brain fog, digestive disturbances, headaches, and other unwanted symptoms, which I had all of the above. Even if I ate some like noodles, I would seem like I was on a bender and had been drinking all day, <laughs> even though I just had a, like a cup of noodles, like it was crazy. Um, or a couple shots. So. <laughs> no, but that's what it seemed like. It seemed like I had just like just done shots all day. And it's like, yeah. well, no, I actually <laughs> was trying to be mm -hmm. like healthy. So many people go through their lives without ever understanding how food sensitivities can lead to these health challenges. Uh, I play volleyball with someone who also has wheat sensitivity. And she also just mentioned figuring it out and just being like, oh, like this is what having energy feels like. Like some things you just as soon as you get rid of it, you're like, Oh, like I didn't actually feel good. Like this feels good. Um, and you never really suspect that the food that you're eating every day was <laughs> silently really killing you. And your doctors may never advise you to look into how you're responding to your diet because that's like your normal, that's your baseline. So you don't know that. Well, unless your you baseline have me as a health coach higher. <laughs> yeah. But it's just that's like the first oh, thing well, I go like, for. I feel fine, like your definition of fine, but it's like you don't know that yeah. this like better. You can feel better. Something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So over twenty five percent of the population has subjectively reported that they have food sensitivities and do much better when they avoid consuming certain foods. Yes, and I'll uh, back to that. I will tell people to do an elimination diet, yeah. and they'll take out the five top allergens, you know, your soy, mm -hmm. your dairy, wheat, nuts, then you figure out, then you slowly put them back in because once you take them out and you put them back in, your body tells you very clearly that yeah. it does not like that. Yeah. Or then, and you know, for the ones that maybe weren't causing the problem, but just exasperating it because your body was so overwhelmed you know, when you introduce those ones back, your body's like, oh, like I can handle this now. It's not a big deal. I mean, it's fine. Cause I feel like me for a while, it was like any sugar at all. And like fruit will kill you too. And then after I got weed out, it was like, oh, just kidding. Like strawberries are cool. I can eat them. <laughs> like, so. Exactly. Yeah. I can do fruit also yeah. again. Okay. So, um, there are many reasons why you may have a food intolerance and it takes a lot of paying attention to what you eat, especially if you do have arthritis, inflammation, hip and back pain, skin rashes, bloating, etc. A lot of sleuthing on your part just may solve the puzzle. Some very likely reasons you may be intolerant of certain foods can be that you have issues with histamine, oxalates, leaky gut, candied overgrowth, mast cell activation disorder, as well as other issues. We will have episodes on all of those issues eventually. <laughs> I think have we, we've talked about candida or no. Or I think so. Candida? We have. Yeah. We have. We're all about the digestive issues. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, that is huge for people and they don't realize it. And like you said yeah. earlier, the doctor never tells you, well, wh what are you eating? He never yeah. asks you that. And you should really start there. Mm -hmm. 
But for now, let's find out what foods may help you if you have allergies and food intolerances. Awesome. So let's go over for the listeners, some foods that can help quell food allergies and histamine responses. Okay, here we go. Delaney and I are going to talk about foods that actually may help your body. If you have food allergies or intolerances, this article landed in my inbox from the vcool.com website. And I have no idea how I got on their (laughs) mailing list, but I like the article. So I thought we would share it with our listeners. Well, at least you got something helpful from a random mailing list. Cause I feel like I get on mailing lists that are not helpful. So I'm a little jealous. (laughs) Yes. And some of them can be quite disturbing actually. Um, (laughs) you're like, what? (laughs) Okay. So I also attached other websites in the show notes talking about food allergies and intolerances. I found a lot of information on this subject and we could be here for hours, but we're not going to be. So really check out the, um, show notes because there are some really cool links that you can Mm -hmm. follow. Okay. So an apple a day may keep food allergies at bay and keep your immune system healthy. Apples are packed with quercetin, a flavonoid, which is known to protect against allergic reactions effectively. Moreover, quercetin can stabilize the cell membranes of basophils and mast cells And this will help to prevent the release of redundant histamine in the body. And I do take quercetin for that reason because of my histamine issue. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I have a friend who apples are helpful to her when she peels them, but the peel, because um, she lives in a state with a lot of apple orchards. So they like to get them fresh, but just like, you know, you're talking about like how pollen and all the other stuff, I think that gets on the outside or kind of on the skin and it still irritates her. So if you try an apple and you're like, oh, it's still like, it made it worse. Like try skinning it and see if that helps, or you may have something else that you need to look into. If it's still and a that, and the apples with the least amount of sugar would be your granny Smith. Mm-hmm. And also I peel mine because if you're sensitive to lectins and oxalates and things like that, it can accumulate in the skin. So by taking that off, again, some other things that might agitate your system. Yeah. Uh, rose hips are one of the best sources of phytochemicals and proanthocyanides. Nope. That's wrong. You did really well. Proanthocyan. Yeah. Cyanidins. Cyanidins. I said just cyanides. Cyanidins. I'm impressed. Boom. I'm glad you had that word. (laughs) (laughs) So whatever that is, that inhibit enzymes producing histamine. Therefore, they can help to ease symptoms in several allergy sufferers. Apart from that, rose hips are also loaded with vitamin C and a great source of vitamin E. Rose hips have a tangy taste that is similar to cranberries and may be eaten fresh or consumed in jams, pies, stews, and soups. I've never seen a fresh rose hip. Like I have no idea what it looks like. Neither have I. (laughs) But apparently before you consume it, you need to eliminate the outer fleshy layer of each orb to remove their fine hairs. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the vitamin C rose hip that's like in a chewable form. (laughs) Now, a note note on vitamin C, if you have oxalate issues, then you don't want to take a huge amount of vitamin C, which then just complicate things. But I know it's, that's, that's why you have to be your own health detective and see what bothers you what doesn't, and then you're, you're going to eventually figure it out. Yeah. Okay. So turmeric, and it is regarded as a powerful weapon that can prevent allergies effectively. It contains curcumin an anti-inflammatory compound and powerful antioxidant that can help to fight allergies. Moreover, it acts as a decongestant that may relieve a lot of your symptoms. If you suffer from allergies, you can mix turmeric powder, like a teaspoon into a glass of hot liquid and drink that. You can also 
use turmeric in your cooking. Another option is that it also comes in supplement form. Mm -hmm. And my favorite way is that golden milk. If you look that up and that's really good, it's with um, coconut milk and turmeric and it tastes great. My favorite form is in the tea bag form. (laughs) So you get turmeric. Oh yeah. Remember the turmeric tea from well, who is that? I think it's Newman's own. Yes, Newman's own. We yeah. really like that one. We do. It's turmeric ginger. Yeah. yeah. So boom, then you get ginger too if your stomach is. Which is dairy. wonderful for allergies too. Yeah. 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 So two for one. Oh yeah. That so is a tasty. great tea. Mm-hmm. Uh, rosemary has rosmarinic acid. That was cleverly named. <laughs> um, one plant polyphenol. polyphenol that is proven to suppress allergic reactions. In fact, it works by inhibiting allergic immunoglobulin responses along with inflammation caused by leukocytes. I feel like leukocytes. an actor, leukocytes, who's memorized all these medical terms to be on a medical show, but I don't know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Uh, moreover, rosemary can also be used to flavor roast meats, tomato sauce, and fish, as well as fruits, especially oranges and my friend got me a diffuser thing that like poofs it out. So you just put your water in and then you add your essential oils. So I've put rosemary in there and it smells quite great. I love and, rosemary. Yeah. I think, does, isn't it kind of like a, on the, it's not an antimicrobial, but like. Well, most actually a lot of essential oils are, but okay. I think a rosemary is also known for helping your brain and your memory. Cause I think your mm. gr- grandmother wanted me because <laughs> she read that somewhere. She and she's, like, <laughs> too. she's like, I want this, but I love rosemary. I've always had a rosemary plant and yeah. they sell them, especially at Christmas, um, in the form mm. of a tree. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Tree. Wow. Yeah. yeah they, they make I mean, them look like little trees, beef. like little pine trees. Oh yes. Oh. And Oh, you just to, just to put your hand on them, that and basil, <laughs> You just like, if I'm in a garden and I see those two, (laughs) I'll just touch it. And then you smell your fingers. It it smells so good. So garlic is another great food to add to your diet. Mm -hmm. It has a capability to interfere (laughs) with being kissed. No, (laughs) Um, false. out there. I will kiss you. If you have garlic breath, I love garlic. Okay. So, well, then it can interfere with the activity of certain enzymes that create inflammatory compounds in your body and may help to prevent allergic reactions. It also has anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, immune boosting, and antibiotic properties, which can benefit your health. So try eating one to two crushed raw garlic cloves per day to combat allergies And again, you could probably keep those. You probably will keep those ones that you love at bay. Except me. (laughs) (laughs) Except Delaney. It's not going to deter her. So do remember to look up the contraindication of foods we are mentioning here with any prescriptions you may be taking. For example, you know, garlic can thin the blood. So if you're on blood thinners, that could be very dangerous for you. Yeah. What is it like? garlic broccoli too right is that like you shouldn't have that if you're on blood thinners what is that one i feel like that's well they don't want you on greens because vitamin k Mm. clots the blood you know it it makes it thicker so they'll tell you anything that's high in vitamin k they don't want you to eat I don't know if these are, but they are green dandelion greens. I love those. <laughs> I do. Don't you like they're dandelion good. greens? Oh, they're, yeah. They're getting more popular. You can find dandelion them everywhere. Greens. Yeah. Yeah. They're usually like by the lettuce. Like they have all sorts of little sprouts now. These give you a slew of nutrients to fight allergies. This unsung nutritional star will reward you with many nutrients that can help those who suffer from allergies. In fact, dandelion leaves are very high in beta carotene, vitamin E and vitamin C. Fresh dandelion greens may be used in your salads or made into an herbal tea, but I also think there's a dried version of the tea, like a dandelion tea. Don't you have that? There is. Yeah, Yeah, there is. Yeah. If you know, you can look at a lot of these herbs we've been mentioning and just get the tea form or 
Um, I, actually tinctures also. So salmon is a high source of omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA. These fatty acids are great inflammation fighters that can help to calm your allergies. Moreover, salmon can also improve lung functioning, thus lowering the intensity of some allergy symptoms such as congestion, asthma, and cold-like symptoms. In addition to salmon, you can also add mackerel, trout, sardines, Delaney's favorite, and herring in your diet. Only Croatian sardines. <laughs> oh, there is one, some that you like. Salty. Yeah, because these are bigger than those little sad like fillets <laughs> of salt that they give you at the grocery store here. It's actually like a fish. Well, you can go online and get unsalted in the cans. Yeah. They're just it's an just, olive oil. It wasn't canned. It was just uh, probably fresh. fresh. Yeah. 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 I think they probably caught it that day and then like uh -huh. cooked it up and it was delicious. Mm -hmm. It's the best way <laughs> it is. And, and it seafood is. just a right from, you know, the ocean to your plate. Yeah, I do like I am landlocked, but we'll still eat salmon and stuff, you know, from the freezer section, try to do wild caught. But when we are near the ocean, then I definitely get more seafood because it's usually, yeah, like the restaurants or the people or whatever can just like pick it up every day fresh. So, oh, yeah, you were in heaven in Rhode Island. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, I was. You went to where I the boats shellfish. came in and yeah, you just ordered. I did. Here. I yeah. cut the middleman out, aka restaurants, and just went to their supplier, which is right across the street from my work. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. Well, besides all the beautiful seafood, uh, green tea, according to a 2002 study, contains a compound called methylated epigallic catechin nope <laughs> egcg <laughs> egcg there we go look that up and see if you can pronounce it everyone <laughs> that can inhibit a key cell receptor related to reducing an allergic response green tea also contains antioxidants which i think a lot of people do know that's one of the big taglines they have advertising green tea uh, antihistamine and anti-inflammatory properties. And it's really good when you put some boba in it or popping bubbles. Oh, I bet. <laughs> As a bonus. Uh, yeah, with lots of sugar. <laughs> you can do, no, you can pick your sugar level okay. at most uh, bubble tea places. So oh, that's new. It. Yep. And just to let everybody know, green tea, if you have kidney stones, you're going to want to stay away from it. Oh, geez, um, <laughs> it's it really high in oxalates, et cetera. So if you have like calcium oxalate kidney stones, green tea would be on the no-no list. Mm. Okay. So sweet potatoes are high in beta carotene, potassium, vitamin B6, and manganese. That can help to heal inflammation in your body. And they also contain vitamin C that will strengthen your immune system and decrease the production of histamine. Also, they have unique root, root proteins, which contain antioxidant uh, properties. And they're just so tasty. Yes. Yes, they are. And sweet potato fries are also really good. <laughs> and they make homemade ones and they're mm -hmm. probably a little more healthy. <laughs> yeah. Don't you have that air fryer thing? You could probably make them in there. I do not have an air fryer. Uh, that is not... uh, yeah. My friend does. And I think we have yes. made sweet potato fries in there. So, but yeah, old fashioned in the oven is also tasty. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. Oh, another tasty food is ginger. I love ginger pickled ginger regular ginger yes. i got some frozen ginger from my farm share ready to go I had, for soups i just had some chocolate covered ginger uh, oh well yeah that's <laughs> talk about sugar <laughs> i couldn't help it i was at the health food store and it was organic and i went i gotta have a few of those yeah. but it's that crystallized yep <laughs> With the chocolate on top yeah making fun of me for sour patch kids that's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, ginger in its purest form is loaded with antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties. 
In fact, some studies, in some studies, it acted better than antihistamine drugs for stopping inflammation. So uh, I think mom and I have done this often. If you like feel a cold coming on, you like, you know, get some Asian food that comes with like the pickled ginger on the side and you like eat a bunch of the ginger and it like opens up your airways. The wasabi helps too. <laughs> the wasabi really helps. <laughs> Wait, I think that's the ticket that the ginger is really good though. Yeah. I do like it. So, and also, uh, ginger may stimulate the secretion of your mucus and inhibit airway contractions, which helps to prevent as well as alleviate asthma symptoms. Yeah. I mean, I go through ginger all the time, just even in, um, supplement form, just because Mm -hmm. it's great if you've eaten too much or, you know, you have an upset stomach or you're not feeling well, it's just, or your baby is pushing on your stomach. (laughs) (laughs) Ginger is just one of those wonderful supplements to have around yeah. or fresh ginger. Cause it's so easy to buy in the store mm-hmm. and, um, just add it to everything. So, yeah. and then you just like basically take your peeler and then just like keep mm-hmm. peeling it and then like make the yeah. little pieces. It's good. Yeah. Okay. So anchovies are high in selenium, which one mere ounce of anchovies having about 28% of the required daily intake of selenium. That's great. In addition, anchovies are a good source of omega-3 fatty acids and anti-inflammatory agent, which can help to reduce allergic reactions in some susceptible people. It still just tastes like salt to me in most ways. (laughs) Well, again, when I used to eat them more often, but with histamine issues, anything out of that's been canned or jarred is hard for me. Um, I used to get the unsalted. Okay. I do like collard greens and those have phytochemicals known as carotenoids, which can aid in easing allergic reactions. They're rich in vitamin C and other important nutrients that will help to boost up your immune system. Uh, You should look for collard greens with a dark color because they contain the high, I had it the first time, carotenoid levels. Again, a note for those of you also on prescription medications, here we go. The collard greens contain high vitamin K. So if you're on blood thinners, your doctor has probably instructed you to avoid consuming them. But if you're not and you can't eat them, they're really good when you just like steam them and then like toss them with some like vinegar and red pepper flakes. Mm, And you can get stewed tomatoes to put in there too. There you go. Yeah. Like it's sauteed. Well, your grandfather loved collard greens, but I, they take a lot longer to cook than dandelion greens. Oh, oh I well, think so. Yeah. Yeah. Teeny, that's like, things, yes. well, no, they well, just dandelion greens and stuff like that. They just wilt real, they wilt quickly. Yeah. Uh, collard greens. I tried them and that, to me, I, I just feel like I need to cook them longer. Oh, I don't know. I just like put them in my little steamer basket cut up and it works really well. Yeah, they're good. I love them. Flax seeds contain omega-3 fatty acids and selenium. The fatty acids can aid in preventing and alleviating allergies by decreasing inflammatory chemicals in your body. And the selenium in these seeds helps your immune system work properly. Note that in general, the foods mentioned are great anti-allergy foods, but if you're allergic to any food mentioned here, please avoid them. Yes. Oh my gosh, please. Some additional tips that may be helpful. You may want to keep a diary to find out which allergens or foods affect you. Uh, Pollen counts are highest between 5 and 10 a.m. on warm and dry mornings. You will want to wash your hands and face after being outside to eliminate pollen. And you may want to leave your shoes at the door in order to lessen the pollen brought into your home. You may want to keep sunroofs and windows closed during allergy season. We've all walked out of work to our car that has almost changed to the color yellow. (laughs) Yes. You may want to change the filters in the furnace and air conditioner in your home frequently, but don't forget your car too. Like that has an air filter as well. So I know a lot of people who are very sensitive to pollen are like, oh, wow, I changed the air filter finally in my car and it's great. You can use a humidifier to modify your indoor humidity levels. 
at least our house gets very dry in the winter so that's a nice thing to have my work gets so dry that uh everything shocks me (laughs) makes my computer screen blank as I get oh my so yeah I was really glad it was raining today it calmed all that down (laughs) wow have you brought this to the attention of your supervisors I don't know. It's like, uh, I need a humidifier, (laughs) but it is, it's only during the winter seasons, but it's just like, I have to discharge myself against the table. Like before I touch anything. One time I took my jacket off and it was so like the static was so loud. My coworker was like, was that you? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you should see where, um, where I just moved out of, remember the basement had all the mm-hmm. pipes going through yeah. and I had the, um, dryer down in the basement and I was shaking out probably a towel or sheets and I hit that and <clears throat> oh, that hurt. That was a big I shock. Bet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I thought I was going to be thrown 50 feet. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're lucky. Like gravity just brought the jacket back down. So you didn't say like connected to it. Like, ah. It was, oh. yeah, that was so that taught me to be careful. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. So yeah, it's it's rough at work in the winter time. <laughs> <laughs> Combat pay. <laughs> I know. You may also want to avoid sitting outdoors around cut grass throughout the allergy season. Well, and I know some people know they have allergies to that, won't even go outside. Yeah, yeah, that's really tough. Uh, which is a it bummer because it does, it smells nice and fresh. But yeah, but hopefully some of these techniques and and food they could Mm -hmm. consume or supplements might help. Yes. So also try integrating these foods as well as other histamine lowering foods into your diet and let us know if you need less histamine medication during allergy season for those who suffer from environmental allergies. And as always, we would love to hear from you. So don't be shy and drop us a line and let us know what works for you. Yes, because I just had a listener slash friend tell me how great the collagen food stuff was and how she's like implementing that and getting excited. That's fantastic. That. Yeah. So that's that's why we do this. Exactly. So people can just get tips and you know, um integrate them into their life and hopefully it will be helpful. Well, thanks everyone for listening. And again. We want to hear from you guys. We always want to hear from you guys. Please, please, please reach out to us. And uh, here are just a few ways that you can do that. You can reach out via Instagram and Facebook. Find us at Salty About Health. Even Snapchat at Salty Health. You can email us at saltyabouthealth at gmail.com. Or if you just want to find all that in one place, check out our website, saltyabouthealth.com. We've got all the ways for you to listen and connect there. And finally, if you like what you hear today, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. We really appreciate it. So, Mom, if they want to hear from you on social media, where can they find you? Okay. I am a certified health coach, and I do coach one-on-one. So if you're interested, you can contact me at mary at feedyourselfhealthy.com. I also do research for people who are interested in finding alternative approaches to do in conjunction with the health issue or illness their doctor is treating them for. So again, just reach out to me at mary at feedyourselfhealthy.com. And of course, I'll be the one mainly keeping an eye on the social media. So always happy to chat with you guys via the Salty Network. Also, just want to shout out our intro and outro music. It is by Yule, and you can find her at www.yulearts.com. That's E-U-L-A-R-T-S. You can also find her on Instagram at Yule underscore arts or Spotify and YouTube. Check her out. Her piano music and everything else is amazing. And until next time... Stay Stay salty. Stay salty.